Hey everyone, I'm Adam Kelly. In this short three-part video series, I'm going to talk about what a synthetic image dataset is, how you can build one with Blender and why Blender 3D is such an awesome tool for building synthetic image datasets, and why these skills are going to be super valuable and why you should start working on them right now. If you only have a minute to spare, here's the short version. AI computer vision needs a ridiculous amount of annotated training images. These are really hard to gather. Alternatively, we can train AI with realistic 3D rendered image datasets. By 3D rendering, we can create endless variations with flawless, automatic annotations. Blender is an amazing tool for this because it's free, fun to use, and provides all the rendering, modeling, and automation tools you need, including Python scripting. As more and more companies use AI computer vision, they will realize the limitations of traditional image data sets and the power of synthetic training data. That's when they'll start looking to hire people with highly specialized skills and knowledge at the intersection of 3D rendering and artificial intelligence. This combination of skills is extremely rare, so if you have an understanding of both, you're going to be incredibly valuable. In this first video, I'm going to talk about what synthetic data sets are and why they're so valuable. Then, in the following videos, I'll explain why Blender is such an awesome tool for creating them. And I just want to be clear, I'm not saying Blender is the only tool or the best tool for your particular needs, just that it's a great tool. And we're guaranteed to see some intense competition in this space, so I, honestly, I'm just really excited to see it. Over the past several years, deep learning has revolutionized the field of computer vision. Today we have highly sophisticated deep learning computer vision algorithms that can detect objects and even predict things like depth, position, and orientation. These algorithms need a lot of annotated images to train on, and these image datasets are extremely challenging to gather, as they require hundreds if not thousands of hours to create and annotate manually. There are a fair amount of freely available image datasets out there for research purposes, but they have their limitations. Limitation number one, they are created by humans, typically low paid humans, unfortunately, that have more incentive to work quickly than to work precisely, and it makes sense. Also, humans make mistakes. Check out these images from the Coco and Open Images dataset. Some of the outlines are inaccurately drawn, and some are inconsistent, and worst of all, some are just plain wrong. Limitation number two, they're not specific. If you've got a custom object and it doesn't appear in one of these datasets, you're on your own. Limitation number three. If you don't know if you can trust their contents, then you're going to have to inspect them manually. Check out how many of these images are labeled as bagel that are actually donuts. This example is kind of trivial. It doesn't seem like a huge deal if you mistake a bagel for a donut. But imagine a vision system on an autonomous construction robot that had been trained on images where 60% of the time concrete was labeled as gravel. That robot might not do the right thing, and it might end up being a big safety concern. Limitation number four. They only have basic annotations. If you need anything advanced, like a depth map or maybe a heat map or object pose, generally you're completely on your own. They contain things like bounding boxes and segmentation and maybe a label that describes the whole image. So now let's talk about 3D rendered synthetic image datasets and how these can help us get past our limitations that come from real datasets. So a synthetic dataset is basically just a fake dataset. Synthetic meaning fake. So a fake image dataset of images that are not from the real world. And before you worry about whether a fake image can actually work to train an artificial intelligence neural network, uh, think about Hollywood visual effects. We've all seen awesome movies and shows that have incredible green screen effects and video compositing, things like Game of Thrones, where we know that dragons don't exist, and yet we can see Daenerys Targaryen flying on a dragon that was filmed over a green screen, and then they're able to bring in 3D modeled uh, everything in the scene, essentially, except for the actress, and then bring it all together in a convincing way that is enough to convince us that it looks real, even though we know that it's completely fake. 
This also works with image recognition and computer vision, it turns out. We can create these highly realistic looking uh, synthetic scenes that look just as good as real life, and those are quite effective at training uh, these image recognition algorithms. You can probably see how you could train AI with synthetic images. Now, why would you want to do that? Let's go back to our limitations. Limitation number one was inaccurate and inconsistent annotations. With synthetic images, the software knows exactly what object each pixel belongs to, so it can create flawless annotations. Limitation number two was non-specificity. With synthetic images, you can specify exactly what appears in your dataset, whether it's a proprietary part that a robot needs to pick up or a set of hand poses that your AI needs to understand. In fact, the thing it needs to detect doesn't even need to exist, as long as you can create a convincing synthetic image of it. Limitation number three was trustworthiness. If you generate the dataset, you know exactly what's in it. There won't be any bagels labeled as donuts or concrete labeled as gravel. Limitation number four was lack of advanced annotations. With 3D rendering software, you can create any annotations you need automatically. The renderer knows the depth and orientation of an object, so you can get precise annotations that might not even be possible with real photos. Now, I won't say that 3D rendered synthetic image data sets don't have any weaknesses. Obviously, they do. It's entirely possible that you build a synthetic data set and then it turns out not to be completely representative of the real world and where you're going to be using this AI. That's also actually a limitation of real image data sets. And if you think about it, let's say I were to go out and take pictures of a bunch of plants in my neighborhood. Actually, this is, this is a problem that I came across. I, I took pictures of weeds in my yard, and then I built a weed detector using that, those images. And a lot of people reached out to me asking if they could have the data set. They wanted to train their weed detector. But someone who's reaching out to me from, say, India or the UK they're not gonna have the same set of weeds that grow in their yard as what I have in my yard. So in a similar sense, if you're creating a 3D rendered image data set and you haven't fully covered the, the breadth of different things that need to be represented in that data set, you're gonna have some issues. The benefit is once you've created a data set and basically the 3D framework for building it, let's say we've got a bunch of 3D models of different plants to continue with this example, once we realize there's another type of plant that needs to be introduced, all we need to do is bring that into the same scene, the same pipeline, and re-render everything with that plant. And because we can already vary all the lighting and the coloring and uh, everything, you know, backgrounds, everything that we need to in order to place it in whatever context it needs to be, it's much easier to do that with a 3D rendered data set. Of course, there are challenges, and you know that comes with any engineering problem. But overall, I would say 3D rendered image data sets provide a really good opportunity here to solve some of the problems that happen in real image data sets. One cool thing is that you can actually combine synthetic data sets with real data sets for even better results. In this example, I have a number of 3D rendered teacups with tea in them, and then their real photo equivalents, we could add these data sets together and get a much stronger, much more representative data set of what this AI is gonna have to detect in the real world. All right, now I'm gonna to try to convince you that you wanna start developing the skill set needed to create synthetic image data sets, either for yourself or within your company. As far as I can tell, Synthetic training data is an inevitable need as more and more companies incorporate computer vision in their products, services, and manufacturing processes. There are a ton of super talented 3D artists and programmers out there, but it's extremely rare to find a single person that knows 3D art, programming, and artificial intelligence. If you want to create synthetic training data sets, you need people who know all three, at least to some degree. That's something we're trying to help with through our tutorials and courses at Immersive Limit. We've already created a number of tutorials on the subject, and the plan is to release a lot more on the topic over the coming months. That's it for this video. Next week, we're going to come out with another video in this series that explains 
why Blender is such a great tool for creating synthetic data sets. As always, thank you for watching.